this is a mole of carbon. How do I know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon in this jar? Did I count them? Huh. Not likely. So how do I know that this is a mole? Let's find out. Our title today is Molar Mass. So today we're going to begin by talking about where the idea of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd came from. Uh, I'm going to go through very quickly and you might or might not understand it. Uh, we can talk about it some more though tomorrow in class, Monday in class. Okay, so in science, in chemistry, we've got to count number of pieces a lot. When um, particles, molecules, atoms um, react in chemical reactions, we are counting uh, the number of molecules that react with each other. If we're looking at a chemical formula, we are comparing the numbers of one kind of atom in that formula or in that molecule to another. So we're all the time having to count pieces, particles of things in chemistry, um, but the problem being that things are very, very tiny. And so it's um, very difficult for us to do that. And so chemists came up with this ingenious idea, and it is based on the carbon standard. And so what they decided was they were going to take they measured out exactly 12 grams of the isotope carbon-12 and then they counted, don't ask me how, the number of atoms of carbon that were in that 12 gram sample. And that number came out to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so they designated that number the mole. And the beauty of that then is because all of these atomic masses are relative to one another. We also know that, okay, if 12 grams of carbon-12 are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, that means that 14 grams of N14 is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Or 30 grams of phosphorus 30 is going to contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of phosphorus. So this is a human-made quantity based on convenience. A human-made quantity based on convenience. The periodic table actually lists the mass of one mole of atoms of any particular elements. So depending on the units that we decide to use, this atomic mass can represent two different things. If we're talking about the atomic mass of a typical carbon atom, we would say that the, tip, the, the atomic mass of a typical carbon atom is 12.01 AMU. But, we also say that this is the molar mass of carbon, meaning that if we just take a regular old sample of carbon, not pure carbon-12, but all the isotopes of carbon, just a regular old sample of it, we say that one mole of carbon atoms is 12.01 grams. So, this mass number can represent two things. It can represent its AMU, its atomic mass unit, 
or if we change the unit to grams, it also represents the mass of one mole of atoms of that element. Isn't that convenient? Atomic mass can also represent the molar mass of the element. So how much one mole of atoms of that particular element weight? What is their mass? So in chemistry, we count by weighing. So if we go to the periodic table, we see that carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. One mole of carbon atoms has a mass of 12.01 grams. One mole of oxygen atoms has a mass of 16 grams. That oxygen is 16 grams per mole. And so this way, we can go back and forth between mass and the number of pieces that are there. So let's do a problem. How many sulfur atoms are in 16.3 grams of sulfur? So now we are going to use mass to count how many. And our conversion is going to be molar mass. So we're going to begin with what we're given, and that is 16.3 grams of sulfur, and that's going to go in our numerator. Now, the only way that we can figure out the number of atoms is for us to know the moles of atoms, because our conversion from uh, to, to get to number of atoms is going to be moles, Avogadro's number. So the next thing we've got to do in this is we've got to convert grams of sulfur into moles of sulfur so that we know how many pieces there are in this many grams. And what are we going to use to convert that? The periodic table to tell us the molar mass. Here is sulfur and it is 32.07 grams per mole. 32.07 grams of sulfur for every mole of sulfur. So our grams now will cancel. We don't want to know how many moles of sulfur this represents. We want to know how many atoms of sulfur this represents. So now we're going to use Avogadro's number to convert moles of sulfur into atoms of sulfur. So we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur for every mole of sulfur. Because, of course, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of anything per mole of that thing. My moles will cancel, and that leaves me with my answer. With 3.06 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. I highly recommend you try this on your calculator. Of a compound is the mass in grams of one mole of that compound. So, let's calculate the molar mass of water. How much does one mole of water weigh? Or what is the mass? What is the mass of one mole of water? It's molar mass. 
Okay, and so what we do basically is we take uh, the molar mass of all the individual constituents and then we add them together. So in this case, we're, we've got two hydrogens and an oxygen. So we're going to say, okay, if we've got two, we have two and the molar mass of hydrogen, if I go to my periodic table, is 1.01 grams per mole. So there is the contribution from the hydrogen. I have two, and that's the molar mass of them, plus the contribution from the oxygen. How many oxygens do I have here? molar mass of oxygen is 16.00. So if we add this up, the sum is 18.02 grams per mole. And that is the molar mass of water.